So this is a typical sample of thousands and thousands of insects. I mean, if you like, this is what we call insect soup. And it was one of my volunteers who was looking through one of these samples, called over to me, said, Andrew, I've never seen anything like this before. And I walked over to the microscope. I said, Thomas, I've never seen anything like this either. Well, it's absolutely minute. It's about half a millimetre long. The head's all flattened out, and it's got these extraordinary antenna. It was obviously something very different. I specialise in really just a few families of parasitoid wasps. These are very, very tiny. Most of them are a millimetre or smaller. And the interesting thing about them, from my point of view, is that they attack other insects. It doesn't kill the host immediately. As the larva develops and gets bigger and bigger and feeds at the expense of the host, obviously at a certain point, the poor old host has had it. Even though it's a gruesome lifestyle by the sound of it, this sort of alien-like way of developing, many of the hosts they lay their eggs in are pests, for example, of agriculture. And so many, many of these wasps are actually beneficial species. They're preventing pest populations from building up without us actually having to do anything at all. It does have lots of very unusual features. The heads are strange shape, the wings are unusual. Analyzing the DNA confirmed our first thoughts that this is something really special. This is not just a new species, this is a new genus. I've been studying these kinds of wasps for 20 years now, and this sort of event is, is, a, is a rare one. One of the nice things about discovering a new species, or in this case a new genus, is that the team that discovers it is able to name it. Alfred Russell Wallace, the co-discoverer of the theory of evolution by natural selection, is closely associated with Borneo, where this new genus was discovered. So in honour of Wallace, we're going to name this genus Wallace Ophitis.